sex communication mean when you are completely subject to your particular court of law? What's excommunication nowadays or a ban, a ban on somebody or something? What does that mean? The Miguel Kheram is the word in Hebrew. What does that mean when something or someone is put in Kheram? Good, so you don't know. So no, it's never like, happened to like, you. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're just they're they like a leper. Like, like they can't join the union. Yeah. Part of society. They can't yeah. buy from the butcher. Like, not part but, like, where are they going to go? Because it's not like they can just go and join the Christians or the. It could happen, but in reality, we don't hear about it so much because. The truth is, the guy goes to the next community over, or he right. goes to they, Israel, maybe or he goes to Australia. Maybe somebody's more of like an outcast, or right, rather okay? than actually yeah. officially. <laughs> well, it's official, but what yeah. does that mean? Okay, so his kids won't be going to schools, and uh, in this particular community, if someone did something really horrific, then maybe in you know all well, the tri-state area, or you know whatever, but they can go to Israel, or they can go to Europe, or they can go to wherever it is. In the Middle Ages, excommunication is virtually a life sentence. A death sentence. You're out of the community and there's nowhere for you to go. Um, the idea of humanism where an individual is worth something on his own or her own, definitely not her own, uh, has not yet been born. Okay, people are what they are a part of. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're a lord and you're head of the manor and you're subject to the king, it doesn't matter if you're a peasant and you're subject to your lord. You were only so much as you were worth as part of a community. And just to give you an example, when a crime is committed, Okay, over 60% of the time, the person blamed for the crime was the outsider. Whether he had done it or not was completely irrelevant. Okay, by very virtue of the fact that you're an outsider, you are mistrusted. So your life very much depends on your good standing or any standing within the community. If you were to be put in harem, if you were to be excommunicated, which is why also if you remember, you know, when the Pope excommunicates anyone in the Middle Ages, it's a huge deal, okay? Because, uh, again, it's not just a religious thing. It was a very, very much a, a, a real thing. You are out of the walls of the protection of the community, okay? That means there's wild animals out there, there's wilder people, okay? And within about 48 hours to a week, you'd be dead. There was no question. Which brings us back to this ordinance, okay? In order for a rabbi to issue an ordinance in the Middle Ages and say, you may not do this, okay? Backed by this excommunication, which says, if we catch you doing it, we will excommunicate you. What would that tell you about the significance of the ordinance in play? That's not right. It's pretty big, okay? They're not doing this lightly. They're not being like, we don't think this is so nice, so we think you should wear, like, a different dress or, you know, whatever, okay? That's not what's happening here. It's not a sensitivity. It's not, you know, a nice thing or a sweet thing or a not such okay thing. These are big stuff. Now, in reality, excommunication is the last resort, okay? They're going to try lots of things. Even if they find out that you did do X, Y, and Z, which was against the ban, okay, they might fine you. They might put you in nidui, which is kind of a lesser form of chirim, okay. They might, I, I don't know, they'll find other things to do. But if it comes down to it, okay, they will excommunicate you. And that, the threat of excommunication was 99% of the time enough to tell everybody they're pretty serious about this, okay, so don't do it. Now, with that lovely introduction, what's the ordinance, okay, that we have here, and how does it affect women? 